Hey man, you know, one of the great things that we are learning, uh, certainly in yesterday, uh, we talked about we live in a kingdom whose king and subjects think and act differently. And it's not the way we don't play according to the rules of the world. And, uh, and we're thankful for that. Um, and uh, we evaluate and use different metrics when we talk about greatness, when we talk about being sir first. Um, and, um, and of course, we used uh, that was the sp springboard for us honoring uh, the frontliners in our communities. And we made a video. We, the church, made a video. And uh, it's phenomenal. I mean, that little video has had over 500 views so far. I think it's approaching 600. And uh, just, uh, I thought it was awesome. I thought it was an uh, awesome tribute to the people who put themselves out, uh, especially in times like this. And uh, so we're very, very grateful for, for them. At the end of G uh, John the Baptist's life, uh, we, we see an encounter that uh, his guys and ultimately uh, he talked with and had with John the Baptist. And so we read in Luke chapter 7, in verse 18, it says this. John's, bap John's disciples told him about all these things. Calling two of them, he sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to ask you, are you the one who is to come or should we ask, expect someone else? At that very moment, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits and gave them, gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the cleansed, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. After John's messengers left, he began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go, into the, go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No. <clears throat> Those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxury are in palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. At the, towards the end of John the Baptist's life, he was struggling in his faith. The Bible doesn't tell us exactly what, why he was struggling in his faith, but we know for sure that um, he had been arrested by Herod. And uh, he was being persecuted uh, for his faith. Um, initially, he had a, literally throngs of people who came into the desert to, to see him preach and to listen to him. And a lot of them got baptized by him. And his ministry was, quote, unquote, doing really well. And then he got arrested because he was preaching against uh, the, the morality of the Roman leaders at that time. And they didn't like that. And so they arrested him. And, you know, as they say, uh, pressure makes cowards of us all. And um, it's one of the things that Satan does in, in that he attacks us. He, he puts pressure on us, be it, be it in our jobs, be it in, her, in our uh, uh, work. Uh, place in our relationships. There are many places, be it our familial relationships, our uh, neighbor relationships. There are many places where we can uh, have pressure, and there are pressure that comes, and 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 we do things that we don't normally do, or we're we're not made to do. And you know, when a lot of pressure uh, is put on po uh, on sports teams, they, they they talk about that and they start making mistakes that they don't normally make, or or when there's a lot of pressure put so that is put on a pipe, it bursts and it does what it, it's not meant to do. Uh, 
And it's not unlike how human beings operate. When we have pressure in our lives, we start doing things that we never intend on doing, never planned on doing. And, and, and so we start acting in ways that is unbecoming sometimes. It's not unlike for John the Baptist. There was a lot of pressure that was coming his way. Um, and, and so he was going through a tough time spiritually. Now, you got to remember who John the Baptist is. Of course, he is Jesus' cousin, and he's the one that baptized Jesus. He's the one that when he baptized him, said of Jesus, hey, here comes the Lamb of God whose thongs, whose tongues of sandals, I'm not, I, I, I cannot, uh, I'm not worthy enough to untie. I, he's so awesome, I can't even carry his shoes. When Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus and he heard audibly the words, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. And so it's not like John the Baptist was just a fly-by-night guy. He was one of the people who was the precursor, was the preparer of the way for Jesus. And he understood his role, and he, he understood exactly who Jesus was. And yet pressure and difficulties in his life forced a time in his life where he actually was struggling in his faith. And he asked the question of Jesus, hey man, are, are you the one who's to come? Or should we expect someone else? Was John the Baptist also expecting a, a leader of Israel who was going to restore Israel? I don't know. That's, the Bible doesn't explicitly say that. We know his disciples thought that. But nonetheless, it's clear that he was struggling in his faith. And so he was in jail and he sent two guys. He says, go ask Jesus. And what did Jesus do? And we see the unbelievable patience and gentleness of Jesus. What did he do? He told, he told the guys, hey, guys, come. Let's go out for a walk. And in other accounts, the Bible tells us that they saw the miracles that Jesus performed. And then he tells these guys, go and tell John the Baptist what you have seen and what you have heard. How the good news is proclaimed. Deaf hear, the mute speak, the blind see, the dead are raised. I mean, just awesome stuff is happening. That's why it's a good thing at times for us to share good news. Not so that we can lift ourselves up and, and we should never do it for those reasons but that people understand because people can be struggling in their faith and what good news does. And when, when the work of God is being shown and is being seen, it raises the levels of people's faith. And so Jesus gently and patiently recognizes John and he says, I get it. This is what's going to help him. Not only that, and to me, Here's something about Jesus that is just so awesome. I mean, everything about it is awesome, but this is just like a, a little thing that is so cool. John's disciples, his messengers left. And what did he say about John? He didn't say, hey guys, let me tell you something. John's weak. I don't like prophets whose, whose faith is weak. He deserves probably to go in jail anyways. Why can't John stand the heat? What's wrong with him? No, that's not what he says. He says of John when he was gone, his messengers, he spoke beautifully about John in beautiful, poetic ways. And didn't try to elevate himself by putting down John. Jesus didn't need to do that. It's not the way he operates. That he, in a roundabout way, put down John to elevate how awesome he is. And for people to recognize how awesome he is, you know, he just gave John his due. 
He says, man, John is a prophet. When you went into the desert, what did you see? A reed swaying in the wind? No, he was a man who was strong, who withstood the, the ugliness, if you would, of the wilderness. He was strong. He was not dressed in fine clothes. He was not swayed by materialism in this world. He was so devoted to his Lord that he was uh, uh, willing to be dressed in, in, in lo uh, to eat locusts and wear uh, a camel's hair as his, as his clothing. He was not interested in the way he looked. He was just interested in preaching the word. And he was uh, uh, unadulterated in the way that he was devoted to his God. And he preached a message that was not very popular. He was a prophet. And then he pays him the compliment of them all. He says, born of women. And by the way, there's no other kinds, okay? <laughs> it's, it's the only kind. He says, born of women, there's no one greater than John the Baptist. Up to that time. He didn't use it as an opportunity to talk down, even when no one could understood would have understood or would have carried that message back to John the Baptist. You see, Jesus is not looking to, for an opportunity to tell us how weak and we are. Oftentimes, most of us know it when we're humble. He meets us where we are. He's gentle with us. He, he looks and he recognizes And he notices things. And he's crazy about us. That doesn't mean that Jesus approves of everything we do. And we've seen that that's not a way he operates. And we'll, we'll look at that, you know, perhaps this um, a couple of times this week. But the idea is when you know what our Lord thinks and feels about us and that he's not looking for opportunities to talk down to us or, or when we're weak, he says, I knew you never really were going to be the one anyways. And it's probably why I didn't choose you as one of the 12. That's not what he said. It's not at all what he said. It's not what he thought. But he was just so incredibly enamored with his creation and that's why the bible tells us for the joy set before him he went to the cross that according to his pleasure and his good will he adopted us as sons into his kingdom and so think about those thoughts today as we enjoy this unbelievable weather we enjoy this unbelievable uh country we enjoy this unbelievable faith community that we are a part of that we think about the way John was treated by the Christ, or at least he was not the Christ yet, he was Jesus at this point. Because he only became the Christ, of course, after he died and was raised again. But how he was treated by Jesus, and that's, the, that's the servant, that's the king, that's the prophet, that's the priest that we serve. And what an incredibly different disposition that the rulers of the Roman people were, they had that day. They were looking for people's weaknesses and how they didn't meet their um, role for them. And if they didn't, they were either put in jail or were, or were crucified. John the Baptist didn't, didn't preach a popular message among the Roman leaders and he was put in jail. That's not how he treats us. He doesn't put us in emotional or spiritual jail, if you would. He looks at us and he sees. And he understands. And so that's the Christ. That's the Jesus, rather, that we, we get to know that we're in love with. And then we understand, man, how great it is to be a part of his kingdom. How great it is to have a king like him. How great it is where it's the king that serves the subjects and not the other way around. So what do you do with a king like that? You're just more devoted, aren't you? 
You're just more devoted to this Jesus. He didn't say, you guys, you know, John the Baptist, don't be like him. That's not what he said. He saw who he was. And he saw that what John was ultimately all about, and this was not his weakest moment in his life, does not define his character. Who of us would like to be judged by the weakest moments in our life? None of us, right? <laughs> None of us would be, like to be characterized by the times that we go through and we think stupid thoughts or we say stupid things or, or God forbid, we do stupid things. None of us. And that's not God. That's not who he is. That's not we, who we are. And so that empowers me, that invigorates me, that encourages me, that inspires me to be even more devoted to him. Listen, when we understand this Jesus, when we understand him more and more, he is just unbelievably awesome. And so another encounter with Jesus that we understand and angle with him. Amen? Awesome. <clears throat> well, you guys enjoy your beautiful uh, day off in the way that you can't without breaking the social distancing or physical distancing or however you want to phrase it, laws. Amen to that. And uh, just, uh, I just, you know, as I reflect on today, I'm just so grateful uh, to be in this faith community and to be encouraged in, in the ways that I am to do better for God, to do better for you, to do better for, fam for my family. And, uh, and, uh, and in spite of our weaknesses, um, our God is just uh, incredibly, incredibly good to us. And we just want to be that more faithful to him. Amen. Amen. I uh, love if you haven't had a chance to, to, to even by yourself look at that video, go ahead and do it. It, it, it encouraged. I looked at it a few times. It was very, very encouraging. And literally people all across the world have, have noted how uh, encouraged they were by the video. And uh, so, um, so we're very, very thrilled about it. But guys, I'll say a prayer and, and, and then uh, you guys have an awesome day. Let's pray. Father, how great it is to be in your kingdom and to realize that John the Baptist, who was just so renowned and the way that you treated him, even in this moment of weakness, and to realize you said that as a great of a prophet he was, that those who are least in the kingdom are greater than he, I, I, I just don't, I can't grasp that. We can make up things about what that means, but that just is unbelievable to think about uh, who we are and whose we are. I pray that today we reflect on these thoughts uh, of this unbelievable king, this incredible kingdom that we are part of. Help us to be subjects that uh, pays homage and respect and live a life that is worthy of the calling that this king has given us. Thank you that he looks at us adoringly and uh, Father, that uh, he has atoned for our sins and that he has met every requirement so that ultimately we can approach your throne of grace this morning with confidence. Thank you for the death of Christ. Thank you for the birth of Christ because it meant life for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Awesome.